about maybe sending me a part to have me weld up for him. So he had one that was a uh, that was modified. Let's, so took this corner out. So what he's got is on the CRF two fifty. Um, obviously, it's a two fifty two or four stroke frame, and they're putting a CR two fifty two stroke motor in it. And so the exhaust was hitting the corner. This was uh, squared off. It was squared off. And this top corner was hitting on the exhaust. So lop that corner off. And then this was actually pointed about like that. So this one was modified by somebody else. It was still hitting. So we took it back a little bit more. And then the angle of this tube was still a little bit off. So it was rotated about like that. So we brought it back down a couple of degrees. So this is going to be a spare. And I was using that one for reference. And now we've got a brand new one that obviously my uh, bandsaw is way over there. So it's kind of hard to uh, video. But we lopped this corner off. Got a nice little piece to fit in here. So weld that up. One of the reasons I really wanted to have this on the show was this guy right here. So you can see that's extremely tight in there. So I wanted to show you guys uh, when Mike sent me the pictures of it, I knew it would be a pretty good, pretty good deal for the live stream just because it's so tight to get on the inside of that tube. There's a couple little tricks um, I'm going to show you guys for doing that. Um, so I already welded one of those up and only took, I don't know, 10 minutes. The next thing we're going to look at, so this is one of the Nova Roto locks. So it's got a little lock nut down here. You can loosen that up. And then this head pivots all the way around. So you can have it at all sorts of you can almost have it like a pencil torch where you're welding straight down like this, which is actually pretty handy. Or, you know, if you're in more of a normal configuration, you know, have it about like that. So we're going to show you guys. This has actually come up on the uh, Facebook page a couple times. If you can replace just the head of your torch. So I've got... Let me grab it. So we've got a Nova... This is a Nova Flex Head 20, and I'm going to show you guys how to swap this uh, Nova head off and put on a Reto head. So we'll get to that after we hit this radiator real quick. <clears throat> and I do have a pretty cool announcement. Um, you guys have been following along. I know some of you <clears throat> are a little more regular than others, and I appreciate that. Those of you that... Uh, join here or there or it's your first time welcome thanks for coming back but one of the things we've been working on for the past almost three years now is setting up an everlast dedicated um, instruction facility so obviously we have some like sponsored welders i used to be a sponsored welder i still kind of am but i have a more corporate role with everlast now um but one of the things with our sponsored welders is we've got a lot of really good talent. Um, some of the best guys in the industry, um, I'm not going to include myself in there, but we've got guys like Mark Winchester. Um, that is who I look up to for aluminum. We've got guys, uh, we just brought on Frank Turquin, um, Frankie's Chop Chop on Instagram. Probably the best chromoly uh, TIG welder there is, period. Uh, the guy is an absolute god. When it comes to Crow Molly, um, we've got Lisa. Um, I cannot pronounce her last name, but she's the um, I am girl welder. Um, phenomenal titanium and stainless uh, fabrication <coughs> and uh, titanium and stainless welder. Um, we've got Austin Hill, um, Hill Welding on Instagram. Um, another absolutely phenomenal aluminum, stainless, titanium uh, welder. That guy can do it all super good with fabrication with uh doing like titanium exhaust systems so anyway i'm rambling 
Um, we've got a lot of really talented people that we support and that we, we like to work with. And going forward, we wanted to create an area where we can work closer with those people, but also at the same time let you guys, our customers, our fans, um, even people that aren't customers, come and meet those guys and learn from them. And what we've done is we have leased a 2,500 square foot facility four minutes from the Kansas City Airport. So it's about nine miles from my house. Um, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a, a training facility. We're going to have like 12 or 15 weld booths uh, set up. We're going to have the latest and greatest from us in there. So we're going to have Typhoon TIG welders um, for everybody to use. I don't know what MIG machine we're going to have. We'll probably end up having like a Cyclone 212 or 262, something like that. Um, so we can get a MIG stick combo as well. But we're going to run classes with those uh, with that talent, basically. So Bob Moffitt's going to move up here to Kansas City uh, from Arkansas City, Kansas. Uh, he currently lives about three hours south of me. He's going to move up here, and we're going to run that facility together. Um, it's going to be kind of dual purpose. So we're also we're going to offer classes um, once or twice a month. So we'll kind of put up a schedule so people can see what the classes are going to be. Um, they can sign up for them and have some time to plan. We're going to partner with a couple local hotels that have shuttles. So be able to shuttle from the airport to your hotel. Um, and there's three hotels within walking distance. There's seven or eight restaurants within walking distance. Um, so we're trying to make it as convenient as possible for everybody that comes in. I don't want you to have to fly into Kansas City, take an hour Uber ride, you know, somewhere to get a hotel, and then take another 15 or 20 minute ride every day um, to the class. That's just, you know, that's three, four hundred dollars you're going to add up in extra costs. So. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, we take possession of it March 15th. I think I'm going to get in like a week or two early. Well, a week early, week and a half early so I can start setting up. Um, next week, I'll probably actually do the live stream from there. It might be on my phone, so it probably won't be the best quality. But I want to show everybody the space. But I'm super excited about this. So I'm going to move all of my equipment there, um, my bandsaws, all my toolboxes, I'll be working out of the space kind of daily. Um, I'll also have a small office there um, for doing Everlast stuff. A lot of you guys, if you reached out to me like on the Facebook page or you sent the Facebook page a message, that's me. Um, and so I'm going to start doing a lot more of that work from that facility as well. So yeah, um, we'll have a ton of equipment there. Bob's going to bring up all his equipment. Um, it's going to be a really, a really cool space. So if anybody is local that happens to be watching, um, we'll have a less, you know, structured class. We can do small, like, private one-on-one -on -one, um, welding lessons, either with me or Bob. Um, and then we'll have bigger group classes once or twice a month. So I'm super pumped for it. It's going to be it's going to be really badass. Um, I think um, I think it's going to provide a lot of opportunity for a lot of people to work with some of literally the best people in the, in the industry as far as, you know, stainless welders, titanium welders, um, stainless and titanium, you know, tubing fabricators, uh, like Frank running, a, he builds, you know, trophy trucks and hot rods. So being able to work with those guys, pick up their tips, learn from them, I think will be an incredible opportunity. And I don't really think anything like that in the industry right now. So, yeah. I'll keep you guys posted. Uh, like I said, I'll probably do a video from the uh, from that center when uh, when we get keys to it, which might be later this week or early next week. So anyway, um, now I've rambled for ten minutes. <coughs> a little less talk, a little more action. <coughs> so I'm going to go ahead and tack this up first, and then we'll see if the uh, arc shot cam will work. It's a little tight on this thing. Now, one thing to consider when you're doing a project like this is the order in which you weld things. So, if I go to weld this tube on first, it might be a little bit of a pain, torch angle-wise. 
to get this little, uh, I can get my hand out of the way for you guys. So if we weld that tube on first, it might be a little difficult, torch angle wise, to weld this triangle on. So we're going to leave this tube for a second, mainly because two, we've got that really tight area. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and tap this guy in place. We'll weld this little triangle out, and then we'll uh, we'll move on from there. So I'm running, I am running the Typhoon 230 tonight, got it at 161 amps, which I'm going to go up. <clears throat> so 181 amps, I am running... 161 amp or 181 amps on my electrode negative. I'm going to be running 81 amps on my electrode positive. Run an advanced square wave, 181 hertz and 35% balance. So I am running. <coughs> Running the same waveform EP and EN, but I am running um, an unbalanced uh, EP EN ratio. So 181 amps electrode negative, 81 amps electrode positive. We'll go into uh, what that can do for you here in probably about another three or four weeks. That moved on me just a little bit when I tackled, so I'm going to reset it. There we go. Is a little high. There we go. Better, better. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so we got our piece tacked in. A little bit of a gap down there, but not too bad. get this tacked up just a little bit better. One thing too on a project like this when you're making these cuts um, so like on my bandsaw I had to put this thing in the bandsaw like this basically cut this one side clean then I turned it and I put it in like this made uh, made this cut so I had to overcut my corners just a little bit so what I like to do when I have to do that is I like to weld up that little bit of extra cut first and it makes it a lot easier when you're running into that corner you don't have a spot that magically just pops away from you because you have that 
and that little bit extra extra cut. So there you go. Let's see if we can get this to work on the. Uh, I don't know how the positioning is going to be on this because it's so small, and the runs are so short. But we'll give it a we'll give it a shot real quick. Need to rotate that up a little bit. All right, we'll see how that goes. Best angle, but you guys will get the idea. How are we going to position this? That works pretty well. Uh, I am using 332nd, 55-54, which has you know, kind of become my standard filler I use now is that 55-54. <clears throat> so for this tube, the uh, arc shot cam is definitely not going to work. But I'll see if maybe uh, I can use this side camera scoot it over here just a little bit. So what we're looking for is we want to basically align this tube with that cut. It's about like that. So what we're going to do, since I left some of the... Uh, the filler from the original factory welds on there, I can actually use that to tack. And so that's what I am going to do. We're going to try to set this down here like so. Line it up. We're just going to bump 
I'm going to focus kind of like on that thick to thin video. We're going to focus our heat. We're going to focus our heat down here where there was already some weld material since it's a lot thicker than this tube. So what we did, I basically just started my, started my puddle on this thicker weld piece, got my puddle established, and then walked it over to where there was some of that filler hanging off the bottom of that tube. I'll give it one more tack. Right over here, we'll give it a pretty solid tack. That way it doesn't try to lift up. Again, focusing my heat on, basically on this tank and then walking up. So I know, this is the other thing too, so when you've got a really tight spot like this, when you can see, there's just not much room to get in there. You know, we definitely can't get it, you know, from this side. So what we're going to have to do is kind of long arc it and get in around that tube. So what I like to do is start where I know my weld is going to be the, whoop, it's kind of hard to show that. So I'm going to want to start as far in as possible and then work my way around. That way I've got a small spot to, to fill and that termination point is on that inside because it's going to be a little ugly and I'd rather the termination be ugly and be hidden than have a termination out here and have an ugly spot on the inside. So I'm pretty much going to weld this thing out I'll stop and kind of show you guys along the way, but I know, I know it's going to be very difficult to, uh, to see exactly what I'm doing on this. One of the things, too, and this is, this is why I run a gas lens. So typically, you know, I'll run my tungsten stick out, oh, you know, about like that. But for something like this, running a gas lens, I can run, you know, almost a half inch out so I can really get into that joint. So I'm going to start there, do a couple little dabs around. I'll stop, push my tungsten back in, and then start around again. So push my tungsten back in. So I made a couple little dabs on the inside there just to start getting around. Now we're out in the open, we can really run until we get back around to our termination. Now we've ran all the way around. You can see we got a little bit of a gap there to fit. So now I'm going to run my tungsten back out, and I'll be able to get in there and sneak attack. I might have to come from this side and then hit it from that side to get it to fill, but it's not a big deal.
plants. I actually got it just from that side alone. There, I know it's kind of hard to see in there, but I think I am going to do one or two more little hits of filler right in that area. So we'll probably hit another spot of filler right in here just to make sure that sinks in. Chris, I actually got pretty lucky on this one, and it doesn't look too bad. So that's part of why I'm going to add a couple little more dabs of filler mainly to tie this in but also it'll it'll pretty pretty it up just a little bit put a little lipstick on the pig so <clears throat> there we go that maybe took me I don't know, 10 minutes to cut and make my, uh, probably took me 10 minutes to cut that corner off, another two minutes to cut this little patch out, maybe a minute or two to cut this off, so what, we're you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes in, then weld it for 15 minutes, so yeah, call it 30, 45 minutes. Um, Mike, if you're watching, I don't know how much to charge for this, because it really wasn't that bad. But anyway, I don't know. It was easy content, so I'll probably give Mike a pretty good break on this. But yeah, so we started with one ugly radiator. I mean, the guy that welded it did a pretty good job on this patch piece. The tube was a little ugly, but I don't really knock someone for that because it, that's a pretty difficult weld. But he sent me one that he wasn't real thrilled with and didn't fit. And now he's getting back two radiators that that should work for him. So not too shabby. I'm going to turn my machine off, and then we will show you guys how to swap out this uh, Nova head real quick. <coughs> All right. So this has come up a couple times on the Facebook group in the last, I don't know, two weeks or three weeks, people asking about swapping out torch heads or they had a, uh, like one of the, the flex heads and they bent it too far and they, they broke the neck and they were wondering if they can switch it out. So on the website under the, you go to like the parts tab, go under, uh, TIG parts, and then there's TIG torches. So you, we've got replacement heads for all of our torches. So the rigids, the flex necks, any series. We also have the roto heads. So I don't typically use a roto head. I get a lot of questions about them. So I figured, what the hell, I might as well throw a roto on one of these and <clears throat> show you guys how it's done. So the little nut right here. This is your, so this red line is your power your power lead. So your power cable is actually inside of here. And you've got your water line, and then you've got your gas line. So on your replacement head, obviously your power lead goes here. Then you've got these two lines. You see one's longer and one shorter. So you go, oh, I don't know. How do you, uh, how do you know which is which? And so what I always do, because I can never remember because I don't replace torch heads very often, is you can actually take and you can blow into it, and I can feel that's coming out of this power lead. So then I blow on this one. I can tell it's coming out of the torch. So obviously that means our shorter line is, uh, is our gas. So black to the shorter line. So... This little nut, this little nut here is a 5 16 This is like a 3 16 and I don't have a 3 16 wrench, so typically what I'll do when I change these out is 
So I'll just grab a pair of pliers, grip that pretty tight, and just break that loose. And it's just righty tighty lefty loosey on that. <clears throat> now the stock torches are crimped. So you can fold these over a little bit. You can feel the end of the, the end of the fittings right there. My dikes aren't as sharp as I thought they were, but sharp enough. And you just cut that line. <clears throat> so now, unless you've got a uh, recrimping tool, obviously this torch head is smoked. So throw that away. So now. We bring our new Nova head. You can kind of bend these lines out of the way just a little bit. You don't want to get too crazy with them. Start getting your nut threaded on there. And you want to make sure this thing is pretty, pretty tight because you do have a little bit of water pressure going through there if you're running a water cool torch. Obviously, if you're running an air cool torch, there's only one line. This is way easier. So we know that our shorter tube is going to be our water line. So we just have it hose barb, this little threaded ferrule. So you just literally thread it up there. And just run that ferrule down. I threaded that out a little bit too far, so now I gotta mess with it. There we go. So that ferrule will go over the end of your torch line and seal it. Let's do the same the other line. And I always like to apply a little, little pressure pushing them together. There you go. You push those back together nice and tight. And I forgot to tell you there is a little on the stock torch, there's a little rubber uh, plastic lining that covers all these. You will have to cut that back. So let me cut this off the rest of the way. You want to be careful not to cut your torch lines, obviously. That kind of uh, defeats the purpose of this. You just take your handle. Pull that water line down just a little bit. So there you go. Changed out your flex head for a Nova Roto. It's that easy. What was that? Five minutes? <clears throat> so there you go. That's how easy it is to replace a torch head. We've got all the different series of torch heads. We've got the rotos and air-cooled and water-cooled. Um, we've got the nines, both rigid and flexible. Um, we've got them all on the website. And I think I think that nine, or that's a 20, uh, that 20 roto, I believe is $25 retail. Um, so it's not like it's $100 or anything to replace that head. So if you have a head go bad, you don't have to buy a full torch set and all the leads. Uh, just buy a head for 20, 25, 30 bucks and you're back in, you're back in business. Um, let me go through the comments real quick. Oh, Mike, I don't know if it looks 10 times better. It looks a little bit better. Mainly the tube looks better. You did a pretty decent job on that, that little triangle patch. Um, Especially if he was a young kid, I said, I'm not knocking him. That's a tough weld. That's a stuff like that when you get in a real tight spot. Um, fortunately, I had a lot of practice with that um, 
when I was building intercoolers and radiators and stuff like that um, and intakes, we had a couple a couple of the products that had a really tight, um, really tight like tube coming right out of a plenum and it was a 90 down. And so welding around the inside of that, that 90 on those intercoolers was, was really tough and it taught me a lot about how to do those. So that's just experience. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's, that's the show. Um, radiator mods, switching a torch head, uh, Everlast School coming very, very soon. Like I said, the next video I do will probably be from the school site. We're going to start setting that up probably late next week. Um, got some electrical work to do, and then it's basically building up weld tables, shipping in 30 or so welders, and uh, yeah, getting started. So we'll start posting classes pretty soon um, so people can sign up for them. There is going to be a cost because uh, obviously it's a, it's a large space with a lot of overhead and all the consumables and gas and material. Um, so we'll have the prices posted for each of the classes, but we're looking at some pretty, having some pretty cool stuff. Um, yes, Bo, the school was the announcement. Um, that was my big, big, big announcement. Uh, not super big, I've been talking about it for a while, but it's final, it's official, we've got the space, we're gonna start moving in, so super cool. Um, the other thing too, uh, Typhoon updates. We have roughly 120 um, Typhoon 230s on order, which is amazing. Um, so if anybody out there watching has ordered a Typhoon or pre-ordered a Typhoon, uh, super appreciate that. That pre-sale is going really well for us. We are looking at starting production um, late March. We have a little bit of a back order on some Infineon high voltage boards. So we're waiting on those to come in. Um, it's looking like late March for production, and we, I believe, are air freighting those over directly from the factory. Instead of putting them on a boat and shipping them over, they're going to go straight from the factory air freight um, to get them out to you guys faster. That way there's not a two-week delay shipping on the boat, and then we get in the port, and California's ports are all screwed up, and it'll take two weeks there, and then another week. So you're looking at, you know, a month to ship them by boat, whereas uh, as soon as they leave the factory... I can get stuff in like five or six days from the factory if we air freight it. So looking at hopefully uh, second week of April for delivery is what I believe we're, we're looking at for the, uh, the Typhoon 230s. So um, we should be setting up. I mentioned uh, Mark earlier and um, Mark Winchester and Frank Fluriquin earlier. We're going to get a couple early release Typhoons. Obviously, this one I have is an early release. We're going to get a couple more. Um, we've made a couple program updates um, since having this model out to improve it even more. But myself, Mark, Frank, um, and then we're going to have Todd, our camera guy, come out to Mark's house. We're going to weld up some parts with Mark on the Typhoon, go over all the settings, all the new features, show you guys how to really utilize this machine. We're going to do a pretty big live stream event. It's probably going to be a couple hours. Um, you know, it'll be two, three, four hour live stream. Um, and we'll go through everything in, you know, light detail on that just for people that are getting one. They can kind of get a, a good idea of what the features and settings are going to do and how to program them and all that. And then after that, we're going to do um, some hardcore filming with it um, that same weekend, um, doing a deep dive in all the features, all the settings and put those out, you know, we'll roll those out on YouTube, kind of like we do with some of the uh, the other videos. So the live stream will be with me, Mark and Frank. Again, just real light, kind of going over everything on the Typhoon. And then we'll roll out super, super detailed videos on the independent amplitude, independent uh, waveform, how to set the starts. Um, we're also doing DC pulse wave shape uh, on the 230, so. Yeah, it's going to be super, super detailed. Anyways, guys, it is 745, so close enough. We'll see you guys next week from the new Everlast School. Have a good one, guys. Appreciate it. Mike Freeman, I'll uh, send you an email here in a second, bud. Appreciate you guys.